Welcome to the Andrew Collette Show. I'm going to attempt a hardcore Nuzlocke using only bug type Pokemon. This playthrough's encounters are going to be very early game heavy, meaning we're going to have to catch a ton of them right away, then get little to none in the second half. Here are the encounters. I can only use Ninjask or Shedinja from the evolutionary line because I play with Species Claws, and I don't allow evolutions that involve trades. So Carablast and Shelmet are useless along with Scorapy because its evolution Drapion is not a bug type. Here are the hardcore Nuzlocke rules. When a Pokemon faints, it's dead and when they die, I have to bug another YouTuber with a D's nuts joke. I can only catch the first bug type encounter from each route or area. No dens allowed per the amount of encounters. No items in battle, but held items are okay. Set battle mode. No Dynamaxing. No leveling past the next gym leader's ace Pokemon until the start of that battle. I'm playing sword version to make this challenge even more difficult. Both base fighting types, along with Gordy's rock types, resist our bug type attacks. Score Bunny is obviously a better rival starter for hops, so I pick Sobble to make that happen. Since bugs are readily available, Available before the wild area, Route 1 is where we meet our real starter being Caterpie. The name theme this time are Godzilla Monsters, so Mothra is very fitting here. But it's not a Caterpie for long, already evolving into a Metapod. And it doesn't end there, since at level 10, Mothra already reaches its final form as Butterfree. Time for our second member at Route 2. Blipbug is caught and named Gigan. Let's get one more team member before facing Hop. It's one of my favorite games ever as a kid was Godzilla Destroy All Monsters. That game is so legit. Wait, we can't go in? Wait, wait, I thought we could go in. Oh no! Let me in. Let me in. Well, Grubbin is gonna have to wait, I guess. We've been doing so many types where the real starter isn't available into the wild area, so I haven't covered this hop battle in ages. Mothra spams its current best move, Gust. Wooloo tackles, but to no avail. Score Bunny tried to Ember, but that bunny has garbage special attack. And frankly, Ruka D loses just because we're six levels higher. The wild area is unlocked. Combi is found along the way in the rolling fields and named after the scary Mega Gearus. I go to Hammerlock really quick to spend the night at Voodoo Inn. Team Yell isn't going to be a threat to us at all this run thanks to the bugs overpowering Dark Pokemon. Now remember when I said most of the bugs are available in the early game? Well, we're getting another four right now. Joltik is found at East Lake Axwell and named Kumanga. Over at North Lake Milok is an Inkata being titled the Cool Monster Megalon. I head over to the west side of Lake Axwell discovering a Dwebble being called the Mighty Orca. And we rightfully take what's ours at Dappled Grove getting the grub and I would wished I got earlier and crown him as King Ghidorah. And after all that, Gigan evolves into a Dottler. Even with the expanded roster, Mothra is going to solo the hot battle again, but this time with Sleep Powder. This keeps Mothra safe from Score Bunny's fire moves and Rookity's flying moves. Simply whirl at them a gust after gust after they fall asleep, securing us a safe victory. Just one more capture before the first gym and it's Cutie Fly on Route 4 nicknamed Typhon. Fun fact, did you know that Milo was a Pokemon trainer that they Dynamaxed through testing but he never fully recovered? Maybe we'll talk about Pokemon Pokemon conspiracies another day. Mothra replaces a substitute which doesn't block the sound based round attack but will be handy later. Bug Buzz wipes Gossiflower back to the boy experiment. Mothra continues bug buzzing and maybe the substitute was a little too protective since Eldegoss didn't even break it with a max attack. Bug Buzz off Milo. With the gym badge finally under our belt, Route 5 introduces us to a dupe hider and is named after Manda. During the next few battles, these insects are going to evolve. Megalon is first, becoming a ninjask. Per the species clause, I cannot use Shedinja. I know a lot of you are not not gonna be happy to hear that. But if you want Shedinja action, check out my ghost video. Manda is next, evolving into Araquanid, and I can tell this thing is gonna be good. You know what? Let's use both of them right now. Megalon chills versus Hops Wooloo, while its speed boost increasing its speed at the end of each turn. After a couple of those, Megalon baton passes the doubled speed over to Manda, who begins the Scald Hops trio. One for Wooloo, two for Corvusquire, and a final Scald for Reboot. Another evolution, actually two for one. King Ghidorah busses it up as Chargebug, then I hand it the Thunderstone, giving us Vicable. Now, Vicavolt is absolutely insane. It has the highest base special attack of 145, more powerful than any bug Pokemon out there, including bug legendaries. Only thing slowing down is, well, itself. The speed isn't great. So against Nessa's Goldeen, King Ghidorah is hit by a Water Pulse, then uses agility to double his speed. After that, it's Curtains for Goldeen and Aerocuda with Thunderbolt, and Dynamax Dreadnought is four times weak to a powerful energy ball. Dreadnought? More like Deadna. Is Ghidorah the king of monsters? He does tell Bead's pocket monsters to buzz off. But what about this? This new encounter, Wimpod. Does he want the throne? I name him Godzilla, but he will slumber in the box for now. Megalon has played support for Manda, but now wants a turn to sweep on her own. While Marnie's Krogunk fails to Sucker Punch, Megalon sets up with Swords Dance twice, then proceeds to Aerial Ace Krogunk, Leech Life the Rodent Morpeko, then finishes off Scraggy with an Aerial Ace. Impressive stuff, Megalon, but I will need you for support again. As I enter the third gym, there are noticeable wild Pokemon just chilling. One happens to be a Sizzlipede, so of course I catch it with the name of Fire Rodan. After catching the Centipede, I realize Kabu's a cheater. I'll prove that in just a second. Megalon starts the gym battle by protecting 
to start increasing her speed safely. The second turn, Swords Dance raises her attack, and I kept her safe by holding an Aka Berry. That way, she only takes half the damage from a super effective Ember. One more protect for our third speed boost, and the fourth turn, she says Sayonara, baton passing the attack and speed stats over to Amanda, who comfortably takes the Ember. Liquidation Oko's the Ninetales. Arcanine thinks Intimidate may save him, but our Liquidation is too strong. Now, in order for Amanda to get the one-hit KO on the Gigantamax Scorch, which, by the way, this is where Kabu's cheating. Sizzle P doesn't evolve into a Scorch at level 28, and this Scorch is level 27. Come on, man. Anyways, Manda's holding Mystic Water, which boosts our water type moves by 20%. Thus, Liquidation drowns the Giant Centipede. That was our easiest Kabu battle in a long time. Usually after the third gym, I get more encounters from the wild area, but as you can see, we pretty much already got them. I still need to grind, though, since the level cap jumps up a bit more here. If there's no Regieleki, there's no way you ever bring Seeking, because Seeking sucks. <laughs> then Feeny is like kind of a Rillaboom counter. Welp, just lost my experience and the third jib badge due to the game crashing. No. Anyway, last week... I guess it's my fault for hating autosave so much that I turned it off. I won't bore you with the repeat footage, so let's get into the next rival battle. As long as Megalon and Manda are both still alive, the equation of beating Hop is speed boost, swords dance, baton pass, then attack with whatever's best like crunch and liquidation. Megalon pulls me aside again saying, put me in coach, I'm ready to play. Alright bud, let's have Rodan with a wisp base hit him on top first, that way you have a chance. Megalon Megalon is still frail to their quick attacks, even after the burn. So after three sword stances, Megalon can die to a critical hit bullet punch from their Pingoro in the back. Sorry, bud. You're gonna have to baton pass to Manda again. I really tried to give you the glory, but Manda is just so freaking good. Its water bubble ability is absolutely busted, doubling all water attacks. Also busted Bay's arm in the process. Don't act tough, girl. Just get a cast or something. It must have stung. Beat again? This is awkward. Uh, what do I say? I'm literally just doing the same bug buzzes like last time. Uh, you like Jay? Yes? Let's go back to the wild area. There's one bug type that is so beloved in the Pokemon community. It's high quality meme level is untouched. The cult following can be dangerous at times. I can't believe I forgot to catch this magnificent beauty of a bug. Durant! That's what you are all thinking, right? I can't think of a better name than Mecha Godzilla for this amazing Pokemon. Ah, dang it! Ah, freak. And minus attack? Are you kidding me? This thing's garbage. Afterwards, Typhon evolves into a Rabombi. Unlike Mecha Godzilla, this one actually has some use. On to tea time with Opal. Seriously, I would just chill with this lady. Fire Rodan is hopefully going to solo this whole gym battle. He plans to heat crash all of her fairies. Weezing does get a critical hit with Sludge, which isn't a worry now, but maybe a bit later. Good thing I have leftovers. Another heat crash, then Togekiss appears. I need to heat crash three times, which is risky with Togekiss using four times super effective ancient power. No crit and we're okay. No crit and we're okay. Yep, we're okay. Cool, cool. We're good, we're good. Was that too risky? Probably, but it worked out for me. Mawile gets crushed by Heat Crash. Now for Dynamaxed Pokemon. Weight-based attacks don't affect them. So while we wait for that to end, we just leech life to get some HP back in the process from their G-Max Fairy attacks, which are Fire-type resists. Now that that's over, Heat Crash that Alcrum me out of existence. Before our next hot fight, I evolve Orga into a Crustle. Orga is sent out first against Trevenant to place the Stealth Rocks on their side of the field, then is hit by a Horn Leech. Fire Rodan switches in and is immediately confused from Trevenant's Confuse Ray. I use the weaker moves flame charge and leech life to heal back to full health and because i don't want to face their upcoming pokemon while i'm confused the timing is perfect as trevenant faints rodan snaps out of confusion cinderace tags in for their tree then two things happen that don't make sense hop uses agility why you're worried megalon's gonna be back and rodan uses scald i don't understand game freak the agility again you know you have acrobatics right hop snorlax comes out of a coma to smell the roses fire rodan continues power washing hoping to burn snorlax while the they stockpile up. The burn is eventually inflicted, so Snorlax returns the favor with Body Slam paralyzing us. Rodan snaps Snorlax with one more leech life. Heatmore doesn't know what to do with bites and fire lashes, so Rodan continues to hose them down with Scald. Bolton takes the opportunity to roar out Rodan since he was paralyzed. King Ghidorah steps from the throne to KO Bolton with a single bug buzz. You like Heatmore? Heatmore deserves like some kind of Evo or something. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I forgot to press B. 
I forgot to press B. Oh no, I was so distracted. I didn't want Orb Beetle since Dottler is bulkier with the Eviolite item. My chat was happy though. They kept begging me to evolve her and they eventually got what they wanted. On to the sixth gym battle with Gordy. I'm gonna use kind of a weird strat here. So let's hope I don't mess it up. Typhon is first simply energy balling the Barbara Cole for the instant KO. With Shuckle now on the field, he'll likely rock him to lower our speed. I set up just one calm mind because our speed is decreased. Now I use skill swap to take their contrary ability, meaning stats when lowered will actually raise and vice versa. Also, they are now Honey Gather Shuckle. Whatever will I do against Honey Gather Shuckle? The second Rock Tomb raises our speed back to normal. Typhon chips with Energy Ball, and now we're plus one from the Rock Tomb. Typhon Baton passes the stats to Manda, which will get speed back to neutral from Rock Tomb, but the wider item should fix that. Yep, he Rock Tombs. So now we're minus one. But we have White Herb. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, I forgot how White Herb worked. Oh, I messed up. Yeah, I forgot. White Herb only activates when your stats go below the normal level. Not just any time they decrease. Typhon comes back in getting hit by another Rock Tomb. I think it can work. We just need to hope for no crits. Oh, it's Honey Gather. Oh, shoot. It's not contrary. Ah! I'm messing up! I'm messing up, I forgot! Oh, shoot. If there's anything I've learned from Sword and Shield Nuzlocks, when in doubt, bring in your Iron Defense Body Press Pokemon. Max out with three Iron Defenses, then just start blasting with Body Presses. Stone Journer ups the risk factor with Wonder Room, swapping our Defense and Special Defense. Luckily, my Defense boosts still apply. But if I get Critical Hit from the Gigantamax Vocalith, it's GG. The first one does not get a crit. The second one I play safe with Protect, and the third almost knocks us down to red, but there was no crit. Orga protects the last turn of Wonder Room, bringing back its tankiness to Body Press the Colossus. I made that fight more stressful than it had to be. With Hop's Trevenant gone, I can default back to the easy strat of Megalon Swords Dancing a couple times while getting speed boosts. Baton passes back to Manda, quick liquidation attack, and profit. Marnie's battle may lead you to believe that we're just going to be body pressing through peers as well, but I actually don't believe that's the best way this time. Orga has high defense, but not high enough to make up for its lack of HP. Instead, Typhon is the best lead. She protects first turn to block fake out, then calm minds for a special attack boost. They sand attack compelling me to start attacking now to avoid any more loss of accuracy. Of course, a 4 times super effective Dazzling Gleam, but Dazzles Scrafty to 0 HP. A 4 times super effective Pollen Puffs away the Malamar. Typhon huffs and puffs again at Obstagoon and Skuntank. Skuntank does survive the first Pollen Season, so he poisons us with Toxic and pulls off a Sucker Punch. Pollen Puff again is Curtains for Piers Concert. It's too late to apologize. Now it's time to face the gym leader of social media, the Bella Porch of Galar, Raihan. Yeah, someone's gotta die here. Someone's got to go to prison, man. Typhoon's brilliant speed allows it to Dazzle Gleam first. Flygon bullet punches, and I'm surprised they went for Orga. The Stone Home Pokemon armors up. Once again, I'm surprised Gigalith aims for Orga and misses. With Typhon still alive, she blasts Flygon away with another Dazzling Gleam. Orga uses Iron Defense again, and Typhon is still not attacked since they set up the Stealth Rocks. The battle continues to go perfectly. After Typhon energy balls the Sandaconda, they glare back, paralyzing our fairy. Orga maxes out her defense, helping her withstand the incoming Rock Blast. Sandaconda protects the next energy ball and Gigalith is obliterated by body press. Duraludon enters, flexing its Gigantamax form. Yes! Okay, goes into... Okay, goes... Oh, wait, wait. Uh, actually, I don't know if that's a yes. I don't know. Wait. Don't crit. Don't crit. Oh, it's gonna die! No! No! Oh, no! Oh, Rabombi's gonna die! No! Oh, dang it. At least it kills Sandaconda or... Doesn't so. Oh. Should have protected. Oh, the sand is gonna kill Rabombi. Oh, <laughs> you were so close, girl. Just get a critical hit. No, you needed a crit. <gasps> the sandstorm subsided. <gasps> oh my gosh, the bomb is still alive. I can't believe it. Okay, she's 
<laughs> I got so lucky that match. Typhon literally just had to be hit once before Dorali Dawn's attacks, and she would have been toast. Durant takes her place, eating the max rockfall, and Orga wins the game that had so much plot armor for the main characters. Eight gym badges qualify us for the Champions Cup semifinals against Marnie and Hop. Yo, did Orga just walk up slowly and raw body press the Lipard? Scrafty slows us down with Scary Face. I mean, we're already slow, and we set up them rocks. I swap in Typhon, who needs four calm minds to sweep. However, they constantly use Scary Face. I know he only has 10 of them, so we play Ring Around the Rosie with Typhon, Orga, Fire Rodan, and Gigan until he's out of them. The reason I have to avoid the speed drops is Marnie's Grimmsnarl can one-hit KO Arabombi since she's so frail. After a bunch of switching shenanigans, Typhon finally succeeds setting up four Calm Minds, then proceeds to sweep the rest of Marnie's team with Dazzling Gleams. I've said it before, but the reason this hot battle is so annoying is that Double's Body Slam. Fire Rodan burns the sheep with will o -Wisp while they mix it up with Cotton Guards and Body Slams. Rodan begins to use Smokescreen to lower their accuracy, and once he's paralyzed, Gigan tags in his place, dodging a body slam. Then puts up Reflect for 8 turns thanks to holding Light Clay, and cloaks the team with Safeguard. Megalon comes out to Sword Stance twice along with Speed Boost, while Hop heals with Full Restore. But Tom passes those stats to Amanda, Double misses on Switch In, and the Safeguard is now gone. Since Double is at plus 6 defense, Skull does more damage, but still doesn't get the KO. Don't paralyze. Why did it land? Don't paralyze. Oh my goodness, all that work for nothing. All the smoke screens, everything. Another Scald and Double is gone. Pinkurchin hopes we're fully paralyzed, but nah, we liquidation. <gasps> oh, what the? Wait a second. Wait, did my Koba Berry go off? Wait, what? Wait, wait, what was that move? Wait a second. It was unnerved Corviknight. Unnerved doesn't allow me to eat my berry. Oh, that stupid thing. Uh, when in doubt, send out Orga. Steel Wing slaps us for super effective on Orga, then iron defenses. The next Steel Wing puts us in lethal range to a critical hit, and body press doesn't even do 50% to the metal bird. And they miss. Okay, okay. Just give me a high roll or something, bud. Ah, oh, yes! High roll! Thank you. Good job, Crustle. Okay. After Corviknight's defeat, Orga can finally eat its citrus berry. Snorlax isn't as threatening due to being slower than us and dying to one body press. Orga's final foe this match is Dynamax Cinderace. Orga protects, taking minimal damage from Max Flare. With the harsh sun out, Orga survives with only 7 HP from the second Max Flare. We land one more body press, and then predicting another Max Flare, I switch in Fire Rodan, whose ability Flash Fire makes it immune to fire attacks, expiring their last Dynamax turn. Rodan starts the smoke screen while he can. Cinderace's counter fails, then Gunk Shot misses, so there's another smoke screen. Cinderace bounces into the air, threatening everyone in my current squad. Boy, I really wish I still had Dottler because that bounce would have done less damage and of course we get paralyzed. We're dead to one more attack. So I click Psychic and pray. Pyro Ball misses. Psychic doesn't kill. Nonetheless, he only has one Pyro Ball left, so I stall with Protect. His main attacking move is now Gunk Shot, which misses giving Gigan a window of opportunity to KO Cinderace with Psychic. Oh man, losing Manda was terrible. Honestly, I should have lost more. Gotta count my blessings. Alright, since a Pokemon died it's time to prank a youtuber let's call antler boy live so what's up man so i, I i'm going through pokemon sword and shield again for the millionth time yep. right so when you go through the game do you watch out for the mind goblins the mind goblin mind goblin these nuts hey <laughs> <laughs> sorry oh you're, goodness, <laughs> you're, you're live on my stream right now remember to like and subscribe the funny thing i, I was actually watching your stream last night but what's funny <laughs> What's funny is that I heard you say, you were like, I can't reveal what my, uh, my <laughs> is if I lose a Mon, but, and I'm kind of scared to do it. I was like, what could it be? What's, what's he <laughs> like scared to do? But now I, I totally get it now that you actually have to call someone up. All right. So, I'll see you later, everybody. man. All right. See ya. <laughs> see ya. Bye. With Amanda gone, it's time to call up Godzilla to evolve into a Galissapod. Oleana is the next mini boss, and she obviously doesn't appreciate a D's nuts joke. Frostlass attacks first with Hex, but Fire Rodan's new Fire Lash move one shots the Ice Ghost. Milota cues the obvious switch in for Godzilla. 
All they did was safeguard. Godzilla first impressions, then Milotic surrounds itself with an aqua ring. I equipped Godzilla with the salt vest to weaken the damage from Surf. That way, Godzilla's emergency exit ability does not activate. He continues to do damage and heals with leech lives while Milotic recovers and Surf's but eventually falls. Serena takes stage, calling Orga on cue, getting kicked in the face by Trop Kick. Orga protects to heal from leftovers since Serena's acrobatics are doing decent damage. After setting up with Iron Defense three times, of course Serena gets the critical hit while Orga hangs up the Stealth Rocks. They don't critical hit twice and Orga knocks Serena out with a body press. Now Orga is not safe against Salazzle with that little HP left. So predicting a fire move, Rodan enters the battlefield safely. Salazzle poisons with poison gas while Rodan scalds them to zero HP. Gigantamax Garbodor slams a max rockfall into fire Rodan who used protect but almost died from it being four times super effective and a critical hit even from behind a protect. Mecha Godzilla makes his first appearance, not even blinking from the cliff falling on him. Protect the third turn makes damage caused even less. Now as Mecha Godzilla digs, his hustle ability brings down his accuracy to 80%. I did give him wide lens which does bump that up to 88% but still misses the dig and pays for it from the stomping tantrum. Fortunately the second dig does land a bullseye winning the Oleana battle with no deaths. After getting sidetracked from the tournament, we head back to face this gym's pseudo elite four starting with bead. Fire Rodan leads off with a will o -Wisp burn and gets crunched. Megalon switches in also to be crunched. She pulls off two swords dances just in case her attack drops from play rough attacks. But Tom passed that power to Mecha Godzilla, and it's all up to luck from here. You can miss Iron Head against any of the first three, but not the Dynamax Hatterene. His accuracy is on point against Mawile, Gardevoir, and Rapidash, but what about against Hatterene? Because it has it has a fire move, and Durant's special defense stinks, and it's quad weak to fire. Don't miss. Please. Yes! Yes! Okay, good job. Okay. Woo! Okay. We good, we good. High five, Mecha Godzilla. Against Nessa next, and it's time to flex our leads. Turn two, King Ghidorah uses agility. Galissapod performs a swords dance. Yeah, they're flexing on each other, but ours was better. Max flex time. Thunderbolt Sea King. Thunderbolt Barascuda. Thunderbolt Pelipper. An energy ball to Gigantamax Dreadnought. Easy peasy. Hey, baby, you wanna know what we say in the gym? Hey, baby. Professor Cuckoo, we look at him. Hey, baby. Swords dance three times, it's looking grim. Hey, baby. Aerial Ace Megalon, here it is, hey baby. In the stadium, I'm hollering, hey baby. Hey baby. Hey baby. Hey baby. Hey, baby. So today I learned that Raihan was nothing like us growing up. You know what I mean? Like when I was five years old playing Pokemon Blue and gave my Charizard four different fire attacks? Yeah, during my Protect and Swords dance, his Torkoal was yawning both times. Come on, man. I want you to use Lava Plume. Megalon was ready for it, holding Akaberry. So the Baton Pass only sends one Swords dance early on, otherwise Megalon would be asleep. Now there's Lava Plume, convenient for Raihan on switching. Godzilla protects to heal from leftovers because if it goes below 50%, he automatically switches is out. To avoid this, I have him substitute next turn, which does not activate emergency exit even though we're below 50% HP because we caused that ourselves, not the opponent. Added bonus, their yawn fails. This allows Godzilla to dance with the swords for a total of plus four attack while the sub breaks from a lava plume. Time to get our hands dirty with close combat, KOing the Torkoal, jabbing the Gudra out of the ring, and we slow down the pace with Turtonator, watching them waste the turn with Shell Trap while Godzilla finds another substitute. This is because even after plus two speed from Megalon, Fly Flygon is still faster than us. Close combat sucks Turtonator right in the kidney. The sub for Flygon was in vain since they can't help it but summon the Sandstorm. So close combat them in the face as well. And the last of the close combat PP is used against Raihan's Gigantamax Ace. Woo! Just three more major battles. The first of those three being Chairman Rose. I have no worries for the Chairman of the League. First turn, I simply just need Megalon to Swords Dance and get one speed boost, as Cavalier flexes as well. But Tom passed the buffs to Fire Rodan, who actually got hit hard by that Iron Head. At this point, though, the bumped up speed and the doubled attack, along with Held Item Choice Band, can blast through each of his bonds with just one Fire Lash each. Now, Rose has two problems Galar Energy and Entomophobia. He turned this should be no problem either. Ah, shoot. Well. Plan A failed. Time for plan B, Assault Vest Rodan. Oh man, it's gonna be hard with Dynamax Cannon. Fire Lash brings down its defense, but we're blasted again and miss our next move. I swap in Mecha Godzilla, expecting another dragon attack. Are you serious? It flamethrowers? What? Why would you do that in Ascend Scorch? Maybe Megalon could speed boost with Protect and pass it to Typhon, hoping for a dragon attack? Why? Oh my gosh, I think we're gonna lose. We're gonna lose the run. 
to stop. Paralyze, paralyze. Yes, yes. Okay, good job, good job. Okay. Stop missing! Stop missing! Okay. Okay, good, good, good. I guess I leech life him. Suck up the health! Oh, it's not enough! Okay. The good news is Rabombi can finish. Oh, wait, Rabombi's dead. Isn't Rabombi dead? With Dragon Pulse, it's better, right? Yes! That's what I'm talking about, Send a Scorch. Oh, jeez. Ah, oh, well that sucked. I was totally unprepared for that. And you bet your money I spam protect and substitute with Godzilla while the doggos did all the work. Sheesh, that was so brutal. All right, that was two deaths. Let's call Melon and Doxy. It's the, it's the dragon one. Oh yeah, the, the dragon Nuzlocke. It, yeah. it, it, wait, like, just a random question. Is Gulpin in that game? Gulpin? Gulpin these nuts. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Okay, so I found the Pokemon, because they have a Pokemon for every one. So do you like the Pokemon Rhydon? Sure, Rhydon's cool. I don't mind it. Well, Rhydon these nuts! <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I promise you funny. my phone calls aren't like this usually. By the way, I'll post their channels in the description below. Especially if you're looking for more Nuzlocke content, please check them out. No turning back now for the final fight with Leon. Three bugs died along the way. Three YouTubers pranked. How will it end? First of all, I just want to clearly point this out. I get so many comments saying Asia Slash always uses King Shield on the first turn. Well, here's the footage proving you all wrong. Now Megalon might die. I hope you're all happy with yourselves. Now, during the second Swords Dance, they actually put up the shield. So the third turn, I protect blocking Flash Cannon, eat them leftovers, and the fourth turn is the final Swords Dance. And Megalon survives the Shadow Ball. Critical hit was Leon's only chance for a fair game. But Tom passed that amazingness over to Orga, taking that Shadow Ball. Now finish him. Earthquake Aegislash, X Scizor Haxorus, Earthquake Rhyperior, X Scizor Rillaboom, Shadow Claw Dragapult, and smack down that freaking Gigantamax Charizard for the win, crowning the champions of the Gala region only using bug type Pokemon. I will say, this run went a lot better than I thought it would. We tend to put bugs in the Freya and Weak category. However, the encounters in this game covered all the roles you need in a Nuzlocke. There's special power, physical power, both defensive tanks, support, diverse movesets. They're surprisingly pretty good. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please like the video and subscribe. I'm serious. Most of the viewers are not even subscribed. Am I a bad person or something? Let me know in the comments. D's nuts. Ha! Got him!